Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. This is gonna be fun. Right. So let's start with the roughing cut for the bowl gouge. It's a very versatile tool and can do a lot of things. And this is a rough bowl blank right now. And you can see at the proper presentation, it's on the tool rest, it's supported, we're leading with the edge, it's making beautiful shavings. Now you might think we're cutting solid wood, but we're not. We're actually doing an interrupted cut. This is a dried bowl blank, so it's still out around. So watch in slow motion. We're cutting, 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 and then wait for it. Whoops, there's air. So that's what happens. That's an interrupted cut. So you're only gonna be in contact with wood a short amount of time, and then you're gonna be in the air. So it's in, out, in, out, in, out of air to solid wood. So that's why you have to have a good solid grip and brace the tool, lead with the front edge, and take a light cut. You can see it's really happy here. We're leading forward. Now, I'm trying to figure out ways to screw this up, so we'll just go backwards with this thing. Instead of leading with the tip, we're going to start swinging the tool around and try to make a cut with the trailing edge, that wing. Doesn't work, does it? All of a sudden, the tool gets flipped over because all that pressure is pushing down on that side of the tool and rolling it over. It rolls over so easily because there is no bevel touching. See all the gap right there? Plus, look at the size of the cut you're taking. Way too big. Which brings you to the greedy cut. That's where you want to take off more wood than you really should be. This is hard dried wood and I'm trying to use half of the cutting edge on this bowl gouge. Doesn't work. All of a sudden you start getting bounce and vibration, you lose control. And when you lose control, that's not so good. Look how that wood bashes the tool around. Sooner or later, if you don't have a good grip on it, it's going to bite even deeper and it's going to flip the tool over, possibly injuring yourself or busting up the bowl. I know which one's more important to you and me. Don't mess up the bowl. Lots of turners use the bowl gouge to make a tenon cut so they can attach the bowl to their chuck. The way you do it is you feed the tool in this way, but the thing you have to be careful of is right there. When you come into the flat on the bottom, you want to make sure that you don't make contact with that big sweeping cutting edge because you'll get a big cut or a big catch. And the idea is to make a very smooth surface for your tenon to attach to. Here's a better example. Boom. See how the edge caught? There are a couple things that make that happen. One is the bevel of the tool is riding on the tenon. When that wing touches the bottom of the bowl, there is no bevel to support it. The other thing is, it's a wider cutting area. So when that long cutting edge hits the wood, it all digs in at once and flips the tool. Now, I am known for using a modified parting tool to make the tenon cut. But you can get a catch with this tool too. One is, if you present it flat, the end grain is going to roll over the top of the tool and try to pull it down. The other is, if you use the hole width of the cutting edge to make your cut, that's too big a cut too. All that pressure is going to throw the tool down. Now to prevent a catch, you trail the tool down a little bit and you take little nibbles of wood. That way it's not so aggressive and you don't have all those forces working against you. You can also see me planing out the bottom of the bowl because I want a flat surface for the jaws to sit on. 
Look at the bowl gouge with the red arrow. See how it's curved? You're not making a flat surface. With the parting tool, where the green arrow is, you're making a flat surface that goes up and in. That way the chuck jaws sit on the outer edge of that wood and give you the strongest hold possible. Now let's take a look at how you can use the bowl gouge on a bowl rim. Or better yet, how not to. But this is how to. Presentation is good, taking little nibbles of wood just a little bit of wood, that's the biggest key. You don't wanna take a lot of wood off at this time. The other thing you might notice is this is a V-shaped gouge, not a U-shaped gouge. A V-shaped gouge has a narrower point and it takes less wood. The U-shape is too wide when it take too big of a bite and you'd get a catch. This angle does a better job of showing you how tilted the tool is too. That way you can ride the tip of the bevel on the wood. Now this is the way to get a catch. You start taking too aggressive of a cut. I'm lower on the tool edge actually, and <laughs> boom, it's nasty. So why does the rim give up and blow apart? It's because there's no strength to it. When you're hollowing out a bowl and it's thick, you have a lot of strength. But when you've got just that rim left and you go back to it, the tool is gonna win in this case. And so when it gets a catch, it's the wood that's gonna give way. So what's the best way to avoid this? Make sure your rim is shaped the way you want it before you go further inside the bowl. So you say, hey, what about a pull cut? Well, same issue, except even worse. Because once you start pulling that tool across the rim of the bowl, you're exposing a very wide cutting edge. It takes just a little slip up for it to dig in and create the same design modification you made with the push cut. So what are the issues when you start hollowing a bowl out with a bowl gouge? Well, one of the first issues is your entry point. You need to use your thumb as a backstop. You need to have the bevel aiming in the direction you want to go. And you need to make contact with the proper part of the tool, which is the leading tip. And then as you feed it in, once it's inside the bowl, you can relax your thumb a little bit because you're riding on the bevel. Now this is a rough dried bowl blank, so you can see a little bit of bounce, but you can also see you have a lot of control. Now look at this angle. You can see how the bevel is actually pushing in the direction you want to go. And this is also what is called a supported cut, where the shavings are coming off the leading edge of the tool, right there where the blue line is, you follow the blue line down, that part of the bottom of the tool is touching the tool rest. It gives a straight, direct line for all the forces of the lathe to travel through the tool down to the tool rest, providing you the optimal support. That way you have complete control over the cut. Now, why don't you cut with the wing of the tool? Well, kind of obvious reason. If you don't rub the bevel perfectly, you're going to engage too much of the tool and you're going to have a wide cut, big catch, and <laughs> big results. You can see that there's bevel rubbing but not enough and it's going to catch here in a second and take a huge cut. That's going to flip the tool over and again this is a weak wall at this point right? So what happens? The bowl loses. You can see it doesn't have a rim anymore and look how out around it is. Look how much it's wobbling. That's because the force was so great it nearly pulled the bowl out of the chuck jaws. Now we touched a little bit on the entry cut, but let's take another look at it. When you start the entry cut, you want to have the bevel of the tool aiming in the direction you want the cut to go. You're using your thumb as a backstop right now, but then as you see the bevel starts to ride on the wood, you can relax your thumb because it's gonna follow the direction that you point the tool. Now if I come back and change the angle just a little bit, instead of being an actual push cut, it's almost like a pull cut and then it starts to skate and skip across the wood. So on the left you see the good cut with the good approach and the right cut with the bad approach. That's the wrong right. But anyway, you can see I'm pushing on the left side with the blue line. But when I'm doing the yellow line, I literally have to start pulling the tool to get it to go the direction I want it to go. So the bevel's not helping me at all. And then all of a sudden it starts to engage a little bit more of the curve on the tip of the tool. I start to lose control. So if you want to do this, make sure that you have the bevel angled the way you want it to go, you have your thumb as a backstop, and you take a small little cut, and then when you start rubbing the bevel, that's when you can relax and the cut will flow smoothly. Now to close, what I want to show you is how you do the bottom cut in a bowl without getting a catch. A lot of people don't realize you have to have the tooltip higher than the center of the bowl. 
And as you watch this, the tooltip is coming down. It's riding that wheel that you're making. And if you watch the handle on the tool from this angle, you can see how the handle rises and the tooltip goes down as it nears the center. <coughs> oh, gross. Um, ugh. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.